Ben Norvell, and we designed a automatic ball launcher. <coughs> Our uh, idea was to make a uh, ball launcher with a dog, because like uh, Dylan has a, a dog that uh, is very uh, hyperactive, likes to play ball a lot, and we decided that uh, it would be an interesting idea to make a uh, ball launcher so the dog could play fetch with itself, drop it off and <laughs> launch it itself. Um, we had when we were discussing our, the, our our when we were discussing our idea prior to uh, getting into Capstone, we were got together as kind of a class, all of us, and we uh, were spitballing ideas, what we were wanting to do, and everything. And me and Dylan had very similar ideas and decided to work together on our project. Uh, we uh, <coughs> the time it took us to come up with it. it um, it took me about a week to uh, figure out how to program the Arduino. Um, I wasn't familiar with the Arduino platform. I didn't realize it was written in libraries, so I was trying to write like you do to a Dallas semiconductor uh, microprocessor, and it just wasn't working. I couldn't figure out how to uh, access the libraries to figure out how to uh, individually assign pens. So it took me a week to go through and learn actually how to use an Arduino. Um, it took about, it about five hours or so to design the, our very first prototype. That kind of got our got our idea grounded, kind of got it physically made so we didn't see it, and about 40 hours in total to uh, build what you see here. Um, we had a lot of uh, troubleshooting program uh, problems that uh, we had to have Max's help with. A lot of them were uh, a lot of them were programming, trying to get our our reader board and our eighth grade boards to communicate together, as well as our very first uh, initial attempt at making a driver circuit for it uh, failed horribly, and we still don't. We're still not 100% sure why it failed. We tried to use a BJT driver circuit and with an output isolator, and it uh, didn't uh, work very well. This is our, uh, in the red right over here is our money that was actually spent. There's a lot of things on here, not that many, but there's some things on there that we didn't end up using, like these diodes and BJTs like he was discussing. Um, brought a sweet case for the Argument of them though that just worked out great. Um, some other miscellaneous things. There's other items on here that I ended up buying that we didn't end up using. But these, this is the actual um, cost of what this is right here. Our layout, we're looking at 280 bucks. Um, thankfully, my work, I work for Encoder and they have a lot of materials there for us to use, scrap bins. Um, they also provided us with some motors, our DC motors that we use. We have uh, 24 volt motors. Um, they run about uh, 2,000 RPMs. Um, they gave us a 24 volt power supply, which was excellent because we had some issues with power and uh, distributing them um, in our circuit. Uh, the wheels we got, I got from them too, so uh, they were actually pretty big help. Uh, this is our prototype. Uh, this is something I threw together in the garage to, uh, well, let me, let me go back. Our original idea, we thought we could run just one motor, um, hoping that that would give us enough distance. Um, we originally thought that we could have it um, spin the ball against the hard surface with the motor and launch it out. But instead of that, I thought maybe just a free spinning wheel that it could run off to give it less friction, produce a little bit more. Um, this motor is actually pretty similar to the ones that we're using. We just have, this actually has less torque on it. Uh, but with this prototype, uh, the, one, the one motor and the two wheels um, just didn't produce enough kick. So uh, we went ahead and stepped up to a two-motor design. Uh, all of the all of the frame is constructed out of uh, sheet metal that was cut out and designed. Um, I, I, I built a template using graph paper and um, using those dimensions to see how they would actually fit together and how the the movement of the actuation of this part of it would. Um, would work with each other. Uh, and that's where this first step came into. Um, we have some bearing mounts right here. 
for a shaft that will run through to give support to our wheels. After we got that um, figured out, we went ahead and bought some actuators to angle our um, machine outwards to get our, um, our distance out of it, which this angle is actually only like 35 degrees, so if I were to change the position of that actuator, I can get actually the max of 45 degrees out of it. Um, uh, let's see, the last step we took was to rig up a chute mechanism. Um, we would take the ball and feed it into the wheel so that you maybe we put your hands in there. That way when the ball, when the dog comes and drops the ball off, it's not gonna get the space <laughs> to um, see we have a door actuator right here, the solenoid, uh, hooked to a, a trigger mechanism, it's just a steel rod, and it'll, it'll actually pull closed and release the ball when it's, uh, when the sensor right here uh, recognizes it. This is our, uh, our, uh, the, uh, board that we ended up using, the Arduino board, our Mark processor, Arduino, um, and several of the eight bridges. Um, we could have uh, condensed this down to two, but we kept blowing uh, diodes on our eight bridges, so we ended up with like, three different uh, ones that are only half. So say it's two per uh, side, and one side only one's blown out. Um, the very first time we blew out of it, the uh, very first time we blew out uh, one of the eight bridges is we uh, actually left the jumper in place and sank way too much current into it and it blew out a bunch of diodes. The second, uh, second, uh, two the second and third time, um, our solenoid had too much kickback and we had to come up with an isolator, uh, mechanical isolator in order to keep from kicking back and pulling our uh, uh, diodes. Um, but yeah, this is our, we have an Arduino Uno, small little Arduino Uno, um, worked great because we only needed a few pins, we didn't need all that many pins in order to, uh, uh, in order to uh, control each of the boards. This is a, a DC to DC converter, so we can convert our uh, 24 volts down to 12 volts because the H bridge circuits uh, power the the actuator, the solenoid, and yeah, the actuator and the solenoid, and they uh, only require maximum 12 volts. So we didn't want to blow those because those were rather expensive. So we need a DC to DC uh, converter in order to pull it down from 24 volts. This is actually inside our junction box, which is where we have everything mounted up. We have our, this right here is our converter. Um, it will take it and give us a constant 24 volt power. Um, from there we have it spliced off to two different um, voltage regulators. One is the 12 volt, one is the 5 volt. And we have them going into our H bridges. Uh, we, have, we have a relay in there to work our solenoid because our solenoid was a, a big issue we had in blowing our H bridges. So we changed it to a solenoid. And this took, I mean, I spent 12 hours one day just re, redoing it, putting everything in there, trying to fasten things in there, getting the wrong parts, having to go back and get more parts. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how the mounting of this came out. This is our final uh, 360 degree view of our project. Uh, we have our two motors outside, which uh, in the future we would like to in-house this so that it's not a danger. You know, there's not electronics and um, motors and wheels spinning everywhere. Yeah, you don't want the dog to go drop the ball in there and have its collar be cut. So this is our equation that we have uh, figured out for our initial velocity coming out of here with uh, the distance that we got. We averaged about 67 feet at 35 degree angle. And with the acceleration of gravity, it came out to be the ball, the initial velocity came out to be 32 miles an hour, which I was actually pretty impressed to actually figure out how far it actually went. I was thinking 40 feet. 
kind of be more like 70. These are some of our setbacks that we were talking about, uh, talking about the uh, Empire of our presentation. Um, our first attempt was with a free spinning wheel. Like I said, it was a, that was more of a, a design, uh, our first prototype, than more of a setback. It, it was didn't have enough torque. Our first motor didn't have enough torque, and when it did actually launch, it just sort of rolled it across the ground. Uh, blowing our, our diodes a bunch of times, once due to the jumper wire being left on, and twice because of the uh, solenoid. Um, countless programming errors uh, throughout the entire thing. A lot of a lot of it was actually uh, a lot of this programming errors was actually uh, due to trying to get uh, due to communicate with the H bridges. I just didn't realize I didn't know how to. I didn't realize I wasn't setting the uh, pins as output pins, and once I didn't realize we needed to actually use them, enable them to turn on the H bridge. Um, and then our BJT circuit, the very first one. Um, like I said, we didn't never did figure out why that one didn't work. It uh, kept sinking way too much current into the BJTs and getting way high for a couple of times for our BJTs. So we kind of scrapped using that as our first driver circuit and went with the H bridge. That so and for time management, I mean, we couldn't sit there and spend so much time just trying to figure out why we couldn't get this to work. Yeah. So we just went ahead and bought our. So our demonstration will have Max switch over real quick if he can to a video, and I'll simultaneously um, demonstrate this right here. Switch um, mechanical relay. I uh, use a uh, coil, uh, electro uh, comes like magnetized, magnetized, and moves a switch back and forth. Switches it over, powers the solenoid, allows the party to pass on open it up, and then light turn it off. So that way it uh, isolates it from our circuit. This is the absolute protection we need instead of the flyback problem that we were having. So if you were comfortable with the program using DC, what made you choose an Arduino over going with an 8051? Price. That was kind of how I came down to it was that uh, the only one was the one who funded all this and it came down to which board was cheaper. And the Arduino was $12 versus an $80 rate. Um, and like Mike was saying, it, it just is compatible with a lot more things. And have a, that option of it. I know it's designed for a one ball application, but is there a way to handle multiple balls? Just to fill up the bin? I mean, we could uh, if, we, if we wanted to load up a shoe, but that would have, there would have to be some timing involved to get this trigger to release and reset. What would happen if there were multiple balls in there? What would your program do? Uh, the programming wouldn't actually recognize that the ball was in there because this will only trigger once. It waits till the whole program runs before it sets again. So it wouldn't like keep, it would keep running over and over and over if there's more than one ball. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, but it won't actually allow this one actually allows to trigger until the program's reset. So you can actually trigger that a hundred times. It won't keep running the program. Um, but as for the uh, multiple balls in there, we might have two, three balls get released before the solenoid shuts back. Mm -hmm. 
I did have an idea, we actually discussed this, uh, having multiple balls loading up in there, of having two solenoids that would pop, run in the top, right? uh, one that would, if the ball would drop, and then this one would release, and then once this one closed, the next one would open, drop the ball, then release, and this one would release until the next, until everything ran through. So, but we just didn't have the yeah, time to build trying large to kill is the elevation on a random sequence, or does it always go to the same well, we, we discussed doing a random sequence, but we were kind of concerned with it being too low and shooting right at the dog's face. We kind of, uh, I had an idea of building uh, several cases with JMS that it would select between, but currently we've only got the one that it runs, but we, have, we did have an uh, idea on how to, or on to making a random, so it could, because it's all time controlled, it's not actually a, like a value, so it's, how long it longer so long off. We know it takes 12 seconds for it to be actually out, will be actually back in. So we would just do the math from, we wanted it to be 45 degrees, but we only got 35 out of it. Um, but we would just do the math to know that six seconds gave us 30 degrees, and so we could figure out our degree angles. Now ideally with more time, we wanted this thing to be cool, like super cool. Like we wanted to have it on A3, no, probably more like a 180. Um, swivel, or um, have control over it, over the Wi-Fi, so that, you know, so you can play fetch with the dog you can while, you get a while you're at work, you know, <laughs> or uh, even a, a remote, you know. Yeah, we, you with more time, we would have liked this thing to do much more, but. Switch between automated and manual control, basically. So if you dog play with itself, and you can play with the dog, you can play with the remote control launcher. But we kind of ran into time constraints, and you, a lot of issues. A lot of, well, not really a lot of issues, but spent a lot of time on some issues that staff time, so we didn't have time to uh, put it on our school. Any more questions? We were talking about going from the three boards that you could have gone down to the two with the H bridges, but you kept blowing all your H bridges and your diodes on. What would you do to fix that so you can consolidate down smaller to less boards? Oh. We would just rebuy the video. We either replace the diodes or um, find new ones. But we we're running into uh, by the when we finally uh, got down to using the H bridges, we were two weeks till we were done, twenty percent or three weeks, twenty percent. So we didn't have the time to order new boards, and we didn't have uh, small enough diodes to be able to uh, solder back into it. Our di the diodes we all had were really very large, and weren't up to the twelve volts, uh, twelve volt uh, demand that we were. Asking of it. Well, you, if I'm thinking of the question right, though, you, you have solved the problem. Yeah, you have solved the problem. You just didn't have the time to fix the problem, to implement the solution. So we would continue to grow. Yeah. Oh, we won't. Yeah, we figured out the problem. Was, yeah, the solenoid. It was, it was the solenoid. Yeah. Solenoid. The solenoid. The one time was just in the other arm, and right. the being the other yeah. unplaceable to get into the one place. Otherwise, it was fly back in the solenoid, which we used a mechanical. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you take to put that on market? So what would you do to it? Because you said you're going to want to enclose it, you want yeah. to do all these different things. Well, what would the end product look like? Well, ideally, I'd like to have these motors capped, maybe even a, a box, have it boxed out and have a hole in the front to where that's the only access in is where the projectile is coming out. Um, these wheels, they spin pretty fast. You know, they can get a lot of things caught. Um, on these motors, there's some extended shaft or double-ended motors, uh, double-shafted motors. So having single shaft on one side. So during gear up and firing, how much power does that get? Uh, well, when the motors are fully running, they climb up to the full, well we have it set at 20 volts. Um, it will actually suck some of that power because it's not as instantaneous to run the uh, solenoid, which is 12 volts. So it draws some of that away from it. Uh, it draws about one amp when it's just pre-spinning, when there's nothing against them, but when you put pressure against them, depending on how much pressure uh, you draw upwards of about three amps, that's where they max out. How much uh, pressure does that ball apply? Uh, when we were testing it, we were jumping up to about uh, 2.2 amps, 
was about where we were hitting when the ball would go through because we don't have that much real close to compress the ball. We were trying to avoid jumping up to the three amps because uh, while our boards could take it, we were worried that repeated three amps, three amps, three amps might uh, cause damage to them. Yeah, we have our spacing on those. Can you tell us uh, the power? <laughs> it's I, I squared over <clears throat> voltage. I don't remember the power. <laughs> <laughs> Gracias. 